Hi, welcome to another video by Fortune Buchholz of NotFortuneSchool.com. As those of you who've been following my channel know, I've been making a series of videos about Chiro Marchetti's Fan de Siècle Kipper, uh, and this is another video in that series. As I uh, promised last week, I would be doing another spread, a more contemporary spread, that I found in an older but still contemporary book when I was at the a German National Playing Card Museum last December. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. It's a 16 card layout and I'll sort of explain that and the nice way that it rhymes in German uh, and then I'll translate that into English. Uh, as usual we'll go ahead then into a you know a still voiceover portion and I'll just throw the spread up on the screen and just go through it very quickly. It's not a very complex spread. It's very simple to read. For those people who have more of a psychological um, or uh, analytical, and by that I mean psychological analysis, <laughs> a kind of outlook on cards, you'll find this um, very charming. It has the overtones of an old-fashioned uh, tarot type spread, but the uh, the goal of reading uh, the cards together, despite the questions that are associated with each of the five rows in this spread, uh, is to give a psychological or psychodynamic um, interpretation and not, you know, to be sort of fortune telling -y or Celtic crossy, even though it has kind of, to my mind, somewhat of a Celtic cross feel to it. Uh, so that aside, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, leap right into discussing the spread a little bit. So this is a spread from the very well-known German card author, uh, Marion Robkes. She's also an astrologer who lives in Bonn. And she does astrology and card reading both from a contemporary psychological view particularly mixing uh, psychodynamic theory with a little bit of depth psychology. All right, so that's kind of her outlook. And her, she has a web page, which you can read. Uh, it's a rather basic page, but it is up there. It's called astrology-tarot.de. So you can go, you know, find that if you're interested in her work. She also has written some music and some lyrics with this kind of bent. Uh, her Kipper work, she's actually written uh, several books on, on cards. Um, her Kipper book was published by the sort of new agey or spiritual uh, press in Germany called Wind Horse, uh, Windfert, with, um, which has kind of a Buddhist bent. And so, you know, many, many Buddhist presses also have a big overlap into contemporary psychology. And I think that's kind of what you find at you know that general outlook at Windhorse to be so uh, that's kind of where she comes from and uh, she wrote the a book for I guess what we call the Salish deck which is another well-known modern kipper and I believe it was published in 1998 I mean that's the date on her book certainly so um, it's a it's a book that's very well known in Germany as I said she's a very well known and popular card author she does still, as far as I know, live in Bonn and still do astrology consultations. I just kind of like this spread. Um, I don't normally like spreads like this, but I do know lots of people are looking for different kinds of spreads that they can do with the Kipper. And I think that if you come from a tarot background, if you consider yourself a tarotist, then uh, you might like this spread. And so I'm going to offer this to you in this spirit. You know, take what's useful from it, if anything, for you. And if not, you know, let it go. That's pretty much the attitude that I have towards these things. So um, let me just very quickly uh, read the questions. What you do is you, you lay the cards out in five rows of three. And sort of at the top of this, you know, 15 card structure, you put the person card as the significator for the consultant. Because remember, you know, in Kipper, we always really focus on significators. So if you're, you know, it's a question about a person or for a person, you know, you would use the person card, but again, if the question is about a different topic, a lawsuit, for example, then you would use the appropriate significator um, in the Kipper, right? So uh, we'll just, you know, see what the, how your question comes out as to your choice of the significator or person card 
you know, uh, would be for you. So let me just go ahead very quickly and read you the charming questions uh, for the rose. Again, uh, forgive my German pronunciation. It's not so awesome. I've never made a secret of being only an A-level German student, but I do thank the Goethe Institute for trying. So <laughs> that said, of course, I always study to hope to improve my German. And as you know, I am returning to Germany uh, in February, I am in fact going to Bunn, where I do hope to try to arrange an interview or, or meeting with Marianne Rubkis, and then we can talk about the Kipper a little bit. So, uh, let's see what let's see you know how that works out, and hopefully, I'll keep you updated on that. So, what are the questions that are associated with each of these five rows? They, they rhyme in German mostly, uh, rhyming couplets, I'd like to say. They really can't rhyme in, in English. So uh, the first row is was mich deckt, what covers me in the sense of cover as to protect. Some people who have a kind of a Celtic cross background tend to, um, you know, interpret what covers as an obstacle. Uh, you know, it's very difficult because the Celtic cross is interpret interpreted in a thousand different ways and it seems like there's very little agreement on that. But in this case, there's the sense of covering is the sense of protect. Okay, and so then, then the second part of the rhyming couplet is was mich schreckt, uh, what scares me. And that's very interesting. Uh, so those that's the first two couplets. Then uh, lines uh, three and four are was mir zur Seite steht, what's with me, what's on my side. Um, and then that rhyming couplet, the fourth line is Was mir nicht entgeht, what doesn't escape me, right? Uh, what I know, right? What doesn't get away from me, so I have what's with me, and then, you know, what, what, what doesn't escape me, right? What's, you know? And then, um, what I'm aware of, right? And then, was mir geweiss ist, what I know for certain, right? But there's an alternate suggestion in Marion's layout that you can also understand this as was ich nicht Verhaben will, what I won't admit. All right, so depending on the nature of the question, uh, you can take that last line to be what I know for certain or what I won't admit. And that's very interesting. It would be, I think, interesting to read uh, to read both questions in one line, right, for every reading to see what you think, you know, what you think you know for certain, but then also to read it uh, negatively as what you won't admit and see what you are in fact repressing or what you could be repressing. So, I mean, that's just an interesting, um, you know, twist to the spread, which I think comes, as I said, from Marion's psychological experience. So, uh, let me just go ahead and recite those five lines again. What protects me, what scares me, what's with me, what doesn't escape me, what I know for certain, or and or what I won't admit. Then, uh, of course, you have three columns, right? We've got five rows of three cards, which gives us then three columns. And you can also read those three columns, um, you know, as uh, what is relating to you directly now, which would be sort of, you know, the present circumstances as you see them. Um, you know, then uh, the, the past or the cause, you know, or, or what considerations you should... Uh, take into how you got to be where you are, because often these are choices that you've made, not necessarily uncontrollable events, right? And then uh, the other row would, of course, be the possible outcome, your tendencies to action, your habits that could build a future outcome, unless, of course, you exercise your free will and change your action, which you can do at any time. So uh, that's just kind of the architecture of the layout, the geometry. And uh, that said, uh, I hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions about it, of course, don't hesitate to contact me on social media, particularly my Facebook page, Not Fortune's Fool, um, you know, or, you know, catch up with me on any of my other uh, sites like Pinterest, my website, all of that. So, uh, and I'm also now on Instagram, as I think I've told you before, so you can also contact and follow me there. So that said, I'm going to stop now. Thank you so much for your time, your interest, and your continued support and goodwill for these videos. And I'm going to go ahead and leap, you know, into the static voiceover portion as I normally do. So thanks so much, and I'll talk to you soon. Hi. It's Fortune Buchholz again, and here I am, as I like to say, on the other side in the static a voiceover portion of the spread. Here you can see it all laid out for you. 
Um, if you want, you can pause the video now and lay out your own cards to correspond and then get your notebook and your pencil so that you can follow along and take your own notes as we go through the reading. Because we're going to, you know, kind of dance through it very quickly, all right? So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, as you notice, we begin at the top with the significator, card number two, the lady. This is a, a lady... Um, of course, who, like all of my clients, I protect by changing some of the details while keeping the core issue for you, all right? This is what we have to do to protect our confidentiality and to remain ethical. Okay, so let's go ahead with a lady. Uh, she is in her early 40s. She is divorced and has a child. Now, uh, what's on her mind, uh, as you can see by looking at the first row, um, are two things. First of all, her financial situation and also the um, eventual hope that she can get a new car. So let's go ahead and go through and see how these two questions, how her financial situation and the car intersect. And I would say that her exact question is, is how will her financial situation improve in the next few months and how can she get the car that she's hoping for? All right, so let's go ahead and let's take a look at the first line. And I'm just going to say the cards here for you. You can see with Chiro's deck here, we have the center card is family room, card 21, what I sometimes call drawing room. And then the card on the left is uh, what Chiro calls bad health or, you know, um, uh, short sickness, card 31. And then... Uh, we have uh, on the right here, Magistrate, card 30, uh, what um, Chiro calls adjudication. So, uh, you know, her current situation is right now that she is, in fact, in family court. As you can see, this would be 21 plus 30, right? She's undergoing a minor legal procedure here. And it's we know that it's minor because it's bad health. 31 is always a small setback or something small, right? Not a huge dilemma here. Uh, and it's to adjust the child support to cover the increased cost of health insurance. Like everybody else, her health insurance has gone up, and so she's seeking an adjustment to have the father contribute a little more to the health insurance cost. All right, so then let's go ahead and uh, go on to the next line. This is a very interesting line. This is what scares her. All right, and of course, um, what scares her it is that, you know, she is going to get this money, right, uh, this unexpected income, this small amount of household money. Um, she does have a job, but, you know, it doesn't always pay as much as she would like, and so she's concerned that she'll remain, you know, overly financially dependent on the gentleman who she identifies as her ex-husband and the father of the child. So this definitely fears her, this frightens her that she cannot, you know, attain the level of financial independence um, that she wants and remains to some extent heavily dependent on her ex-husband. So um, let's go ahead and see what is beside her or what's with her, right? And this can be both what's with you in a positive sense and in a negative sense, right? What's beside you? What's with you? What's sitting here? So you can see here that she has, um, you know, a lot of thoughts and she's worried, right? Um, you know, the official person here, uh, as we can see, we have card in the middle is card 22, official person or military person. Then the card on the left is expectation, you know, 28. And then we have the card on the right is thoughts. So, uh, you know, we can see that uh, what is with her or what's for her is are these controlling, you know, uh, thoughts, maybe even anxiety, right, as she waits for the outcome of this decision and as she considers what her financial situation is. It, it does seem to imply that we may be looking at sort of three months until she sees this extra money that she's looking at. So we'll just go ahead and see, you know, how that plays out. So then, um, you know, let's go ahead as to what will not escape her. This is the next line. You can see that this uh, is has in the center card 24, uh, thief, 
This is an interesting and difficult card. And then you can see the card on the right is 37. Chiro's Poverty, this is an extra card that's unique to his deck. And card 36, Distant Horizons, which is her fondest hopes and dreams, right? So, um, you know, what she's really um, considers that she needs to focus on here is the fact that even despite her monetary difficulties and even if she should you know, lose um, this suit, right, um, this, this monetary child support question, um, th that, you know, her fondest wishes, you know, what she's really aiming for in life, her goals need not be impacted, right? Because you have a short-term financial setback doesn't mean that you have to give up on all of your goals and plans. And so uh, she and I have a conversation about how she can make life adjustments to keep herself focused on what she really wants for her in spite of, you know, the practical challenges of daily life that, frankly, you know, everyone faces in one guise or another. So then let's go ahead and, and look very quickly at the last line. And as you can see, um, this is in the center, a mature man, card Kipper 5, right? A false person on the right, a very negative card. And then we see on the left, a journey, card 10. So let's go ahead and uh, talk about the car here, which I think shows up in, in card 10. So, uh, you know, um, what she won't admit here, if we're going to look at the last line in, in this way, is that, you know, she doesn't have a very good relationship with her father. He is a controlling figure. She hasn't always enjoyed interacting with him. Um, you know, he hasn't always been supportive of her, she feels, and she may have to go to him and seek his help to get this car that she wants. And that's something that, you know, she has to, to think about how, it, you know, if she doesn't get the lawsuit, or if she doesn't get the money from the lawsuit, or if it doesn't come out her way, you know, does she have to go to her father and, and to be able to, you know, get the new quote unquote used car. So her, her real, you know, issue for her as she talks is the fact that she can't quite achieve the kind of emotional and financial independence that she seeks. She's always dependent on either, you know, having help from her father or waiting for money from her ex-husband. And so, you know, she wants to work on ways that she can be more financially independent and how she can, you know, get over this issue that she has about relying on her parents when she needs help, even though, of course, since in the end it's for her child as well, it's, you know, something that she needs to adjust and find, you know, the balance, right, in her life, how she can have a good relationship with her father, a productive relationship with the child's father, her ex-husband, and yet still manage, you know, these day-to-day -day issues that often require help from other people for short or long periods of time. And you have to learn how to do that, right, without um, impacting, as we said, your own goals or your own sense of self-esteem and self-efficacy. So that's something that, you know, you could talk to someone, and we did talk about, uh, you know, for quite some time. So now, uh, not to go on, because I don't want this video to be too long, um, I want to just quickly go through the columns here, which you could see, you know, the column on the uh, left as the past or the cause, the longer column in the center as the present with the main female, and the card, uh, the card column on the right here as a possible outcome depending on her tendencies of actions, which of course she can change by acting uh, on any of the topics that we have discussed to forge a new path for her. So let's go ahead and just kind of quickly run through these, right? So we see in the left-hand column here, Bad health, 31, unexpected income, 27, expectation, 28, right? Distant horizons or great hopes, great water, right? Uh, card 36, and then we have journey card 10. So we can see that uh, in the past or sort of the cause of the situation, right, is this minor setback in terms of the increased health insurance premium, which she had honestly, she said, kind of expected because, you know, Basically, everybody's health care premiums are going up, right? Um, and yet she does have her own goals, specifically in a pra practical and concrete way, around this new car, right? So she's very concerned about, you know, waiting and 
you know, how she's going to handle this hope for the car that she feels like she really needs, and then also dealing with this increase, which was not unexpected in her health care premium. So let's go ahead then, and, you know, this is what she feels has put her in this, you know, her current frame of mind or her current situation. So uh, let's go ahead then and look at the present, which is, of course, uh, the lady, card number two, uh, the family room, or as I like to say, the drawing room, Kipper 21, occupation, Kipper 34, uh, the official person, Kipper 22, the difficult card here, uh, Kipper 24, thief, and uh, the mature man, Kipper 5, who, as I said, she identifies as her father. So um, when I ask her in this context, right, um, about, you know, this line, I asked her again about the identity of the, you know, military person. So when we, we looked at the line, we understood him as a quality of, you know, her thoughts. But here she sees this person as her boss. And, um, you know, uh, she is uh, very concerned about her personal income. And that's how we can see in, you know, the family room, what's personal to you, what's private. Her job is, of course, card 34. Her boss, right? Her boss has uh, currently cutting back on the ability for overtime, and that is, you know, of course, causing her another financial impact. She's losing that money, and she is not likely to, you know, get it back in the short term until overtime becomes available again. And then here we have, again, at the end, her father, the person for whom she may have to go to for help, you know, for financial help, so uh, in terms of the car, but also, you know, for this short, short-term gap in terms of trying to just, you know, put it all together. So that's kind of where she feels like she is at the moment, at the present, and that's certainly, you know, it's a challenging problem. I think everybody's been there at one time or another, you know, um, and the question is, is how you, you know, handle that, how you're very practical and business-like and just sort of, you know, make concrete steps uh, that are positive to get yourself through what you have to do to protect yourself and your and your child while not, as I said, giving up too much autonomy and, you know, not bashing yourself because, you know, sometimes we all need a little help, even if it's from a source we, you know, not always like to take help from. So let's go ahead and look at what, you know, the future tendencies could be, right? So, um, this could be uh, card 30, magistrate or adjudication. Then we go down uh, to the gentleman, who again we've identified as the father of the child or the ex-husband. Thoughts, 16. Uh, card 37, special to Chiro's deck, poverty. And then false person, card number 8. Now this is very interesting, I think, in, in this situation. So... Um, uh, what I'd like to do here is I would like to go ahead and talk, as I said, about the tendencies. I think that in her court case with her ex-husband that she is certainly thinking about, it's certainly on her mind, right, that the false person, you know, has the ability to make the card it's with the opposite. So um, I'm seeing here that her fears of, you know, poverty, of distress, right, of a dire financial condition may not actually come to pass, Right, and so I talk to her a lot about her tendencies to catastrophize, to always think that things are going to go in a negative direction, and you know she kind of brainstorms some ideas about what she could do to you know stop that kind of internal criticism, to not immediately go to the worst possible scenario, right? To lay out alternate plans and to deal with her negative self-talk, to always, you know do things that will bolster her sense of self-confidence, of self-efficacy, so she can, you know, go ahead and go forward with confidence and not, you know, constantly be circulating uh, these, you know, critical thoughts. And I want to say critical because, remember, the military man can be a very, you know, um, uh, can be a very difficult, brash, controlling, you know, person and these that these are the quality these thoughts have harsh critical controlling right so um you know that's what i i, I want to say about that so then let's go ahead and, and look at the last line again right row number five and this leads me to you know go back to her and talk to her about 
her goal for the car, you know, and if it's going to cause her this kind, um, this this kind of rumination, this kind of you know negative, repetitive thought pattern, you know, could she delay the car purchase so she wouldn't have to to, to rely on her father? Could she talk to her father or start to readjust their relationship so that if she had to go get that car, with his help, then you know there wouldn't be this sort of negative emotional uh, repercussions if she could you know, just reset that relationship or if it's not possible at this time to repair that and to establish the kind of boundary that she needs to have. So these are the kinds of things that we talked about and you can quickly see how um, this uh, interesting uh, little spread uh, that we get from Marion Robkus, um, you know, it has both psychological and very practical, literal, down-to-earth interpretations, and I just kind of want to show how both of those have interacted. So I hope you've enjoyed this, even though we ran for ran through it rather quickly, and I think the card combinations, particularly if you've watched my other three videos about the card meanings in my other card readings, you've kind of seen how we combine those to come out with this very conversational sort of you know, sentence by sentence meeting. So again, uh, thank you so much for your time. I hope you enjoy the spread. Uh, do try it out for yourself. And again, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me on my social media. And um, thank you so much for your support. I look forward to making another video for you soon. Uh, I've gotten a lot of questions about timing in the Kipper. I have mentioned that in the card meeting videos, but I may make a very short video where I just quickly go through and you know, display in one video all of the cards and their timings just to, you know, have it all together in one place. So until then, have a great day, have a great week, and uh, enjoy your cards. Thanks.